Good morning to you all and a warm welcome to our witnesses today. Today we'll be confronting a deeply troubling and disturbing situation affecting Indian country nationwide, the hidden crisis of missing and murdered indigenous women. A 2016 National Institute of Justice reported, report noted that 1.5 million American Indian and Alaska Native women experienced violence in their lifetime. On reservations, American Indian and Alaska Native women experienced murder rates 10 times the national average. Additionally, independent report found at least 5,712 cases of missing or murdered indigenous women that were reported just in 2016. In reality, these numbers are much larger because indigenous women are often underrepresented in national and local data. A lack of comprehensive data to quantify the number of missing and murdered women in Indian country is just one factor contributing to this crisis. The witnesses we have here today will attest to many other factors that exasperate this situation, including the following. Extreme jurisdictional challenges in our criminal justice system leading to confusion, delays, and lack of prosecution, and inadequate resources for tribal justice systems. Before we begin, I'd like to share with you all just a few of the heartbreaking cases that have, been brought, have brought new attention to this situation in Indian country, and that highlight some of the failures of our current system. Ashley Loring Heavy Runner was last seen in June 2017 on the Blackfeet Reservation in Montana. Her family and friends spent a year searching for her on their own. In February 2018, nine months, nine months after Ashley went missing, the Federal Bureau of Investigation finally joined the search. To this day, even with the help of the FBI, Ashley still remains missing. In 2013, Mackenzie Howard, a 13-year-old villager from Cake, Alaska, went missing after a memorial ceremony. After her body was found behind a local church, it took 11 hours, 11 hours for state troopers to finally arrive, during which time the village men guarded Mackenzie's body and the crime scene throughout the night. In 2016, Ashlyn Mike, an 11-year-old Navajo girl, was found dead after being tricked into accepting a ride home from a stranger while playing after school on the Navajo reservation. Because of jurisdictional issues, an official Amber Alert for Ashleen wasn't issued until 12 hours after her disappearance. According to a study on child abductions by the Washington State Attorney General's Office, 76% of kidnapped children are killed within the first three hours. In 2017, Savannah Graywind, a 22-year-old member of the Spirit Lake tribe, went missing in Fargo, North Dakota. Savannah was eight months pregnant. <clears throat> Her brutal attack and murder were perpetuated by a neighbor, and her body was found eight days later by a kayaker near the Red River, north of Fargo. I know these stories are hard to hear. Trust me, it's hard for me to read them. But we must face this problem in order to address it. We must improve the data system related to murdered and missing indigenous women to truly identify the scope of this problem. We must prioritize intergovernmental communication to reduce the lag time responding to these atrocities, and we must change the law enforcement protocols to improve the proactivity in combating violence against indigenous women. We must take action so this does not keep us going. <clears throat> Today, we're going to hear some invaluable uh, testimony from experts who are fighting on the front lines of this battle and what is working, what is not what we can do here in Congress to end this cycle of violence. 